the stars and you. Welcome back to our channel. My name is Juan Scribe and here at Ethereal Art Studios, I'm an artist, you're an artist, we are all artists. With that said, today's video is based on Stanley Kubrick's 1981 seminal horror masterpiece, The Shining, starring Jack Nicholson and Shelley Duvall. The colors that we'll need are simply black, blue, and white. So before we get started though, hit the notification button and subscribe to our channel. That way you'll stay up to date and receive notifications on our latest time lapses and tutorials like this one. So let's get started. So let's get started with some blue. So the blue I'm using is dark blue, but any shade is fine. So I'm also using a 3 4 of an inch brush and it's flat as you can see. So I'm making this circular shape and I'm going to paint all around it until the end of the canvas using the same brush. But I'm going to keep the, the circular motion so that all my brush strokes are, are, they have a curve and they follow the same circular direction. Once the whole background is filled with that blue, we can then use some black and mix it using the same brush. I did not wash it because I needed it to mix. I needed to mix with the blue that's on the brush. And then I add that black paint onto the canvas itself, right on it, to make the sides of the maze. Okay, so now let's use some white paint as well. So I have not washed the brush uh, at all because it's good that the colors are mixing once again. But this time I'm gonna make a lighter shade of that blue and I'm also gonna make sure that it has a little bit of black in it too. This is for the ground where Jack Torrance is gonna be chasing little Danny. And here also, we want to make sure that our brush strokes are not like straight, you know, from one side to the other. They should have sort of like a circular direction, a curve. So the canvas is still wet. So we can use some white. Let's add some white by itself. It's going to blend pretty easily because the canvas is not dry yet. And after this, we can finally wash our brush. You wash it by hitting the bottom of the cup and then you dry it using a paper towel or a napkin. Now I'm gonna take white again and I'm gonna paint the inside of that shape that I left empty, that circle. Then I start kind of going outward and then it blends with the blue that's there. It blends with all the colors that are there. And I just take my time to slowly bring this glare of the light, bring it out and blend it with the colors that are surrounding it. I'm gonna leave just a little bit at the top there, a little bit of space. Then I'm gonna, with my the corner of my brush, just get a, a tiny speck of black paint and use that to kind of do the, the reverse, blend it back down slightly. And it'll blend, it'll mix with the, the white that we just added. We wanna reconcile it all. But there is a distinction, obviously, between the two walls of the maze and, you know, the, the end. There, there's certainly still a sharp line or contrast, as you can see. Now I have a different type of brush. This is not a flat brush because I don't want my marks to be very perfect. I want them to be kind of just um, very 
bushy, if you will. So the brush is kind of like bushy. It's not exactly, you know, flat and sharp. And I'm using this to dab on with black paint. Some of the texture on those, on the maze, on the walls, which is, you know, with trees, uh, on the trees that are, that make up the walls. I'll do it on both sides. Now my brush strokes are like pretty broad um, at, at the ends, which is right here where I'm doing it. When it gets closer, closer to that light, kind of go a little smaller because something that is farther away appears smaller. So the further away from us, the smaller. <laughs> that is a lot I just said, right? Now, <laughs> it's all about perspective. Things that are appear closer to us are appear bigger and anything that is farther away appears slightly smaller. Okay, so now let's paint the trees that are kind of farther away. They're in there near the light. They're going to be lighter. So it's a gray mixture. And um, so I, I added black to some white to make the gray. But then I add a little bit of blue to it too. I want it to stay bluish because of the whole environment. So as you can see, it's kind of bluish. And I use that to dab on some, some trees, which are you know, part of the wall maze, of the maze walls. But I add them with the same brush. And they're in there. So they're not as dark as the ones that are closest to us. Okay, so let's go back to the brush that we use for the background. So here I'm using my three-fourths of an inch brush. I'm, I'm, I washed it, now I'm drying it. And I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make more of this mixture that I use for those trees that are in there. And the reason why I'm making this gray is I'm, I'm gonna add some of that gray, grayish blue to the floor. Now, I also wanna remind everyone to join us. Join our team. Uh, hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification button. You wanna make sure that you watch all of the rest of our videos too. We love horror movies. We love superhero movies and also other genres too but we have tutorials like this one based on movies um, in the Hellraiser series Halloween other John Carpenter films uh, as well as some adventure films and science fiction movies so make sure that you subscribe to us so that you don't miss any of our videos okay so let's make a lighter much much lighter uh, version of that gray that we use for the floor, for those trees in there. It's much lighter because it has more white. I'm gonna use that to dab on some light, or some snow, I should say. This is the snow, actually, that's hitting, that's, that has landed on those trees. But now I'm gonna make some that is a little bit darker, so I add black to it to go back to dark. But we add blue to keep the continuity once again. So we wanna go darker because we're gonna add light Sorry, once again, it's snow. We want to add snow to the trees that are now closer to us. So here we are adding that, um, the snow. And I'm just dabbing it on. This is the same brush that I used to add the black um, trees. And I'm dabbing it on. Now, once again, very important. The ones that are farthest away from us are smaller. As we get closer to the ends of the canvas, it get, we could push harder, we could make them bigger, much more broad. As you can see here, I'm kind of pushing really hard, making them very broad and, and wide. Okay, so once I added all that snow, I put that brush in the water, and now I'm gonna go back to uh, one of the other brushes I had. Uh, it's it, I dipped it in water, and then made a very, very, very watered down uh, light, light blue. This is to kind of close a little bit of that hole that is very open there. So it's very, very light, barely adding it to the canvas. But I do make sure I blend it with whatever is up there already, so that it doesn't appear too different. But basically the goal is just to soften and, and close a little bit that hole, that hole in the end. So are you guys ready for Jack? Here's Johnny! Okay, so 
uh, I have a smaller brush even. Now I have a number four, it's very small. And I'm using black paint. I'm adding a little bit of blue to it, just a little bit so that it has, again, continuity. Uh, it's very, very dark though. And I'm gonna start with his, uh, his back and shoulders, which uh, is kind of at a slant, as you can see, because he's kind of struggling to walk. He's crouching. He also has an ax on his, in his arm. I mean, in being held by his hand. Uh, but this is his back and now his uh, abdomen. The good thing about drawing or painting silhouettes is obviously that there's not too much detail that needs to be added. It's, it's, it's enough as a shadow, as a shape, and you'll see it come together. Make all the lines, the marks that I make, and uh, take a deep breath, let it out, and just have fun with it. We're paying homage to a great film, a great actor, just a great, uh, great um, project from Stanley Cooper that has endured the test of time and has really you know, made its mark in horror movie lore. Okay, so I need to go even smaller once again. Now I need a detail brush, something that is tiny, because we have to paint the axe in his hand. It's gonna be the same color, and it's gonna be very, very small. It's gonna have a handle, a long you know, stick, and then of course the axe part. So first I'm gonna make the axe part. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you how to make some shadows. So I take one of the small brushes, this is my number four, I dip it in black paint, then I wipe it off, all of it, with a paper towel. But of course there's still a tiny tiny bit left in the bristles. That's what I use to kind of just just brush on some shadow. Kind of just smudge it on. Just smudge it on. And once we add enough, we could go bigger, get a bigger brush, and this will add you know, perspective once again, since the closer to us, then it looks bigger. So we add bigger shadows by using a bigger brush. Same technique though. What I'm doing here is simply adding another layer of black paint to Jack. And we're at the point of our painting where you could add any details, any extra details to perfect anything you have to. Here I'm making my, my uh, trees just more detailed. I'm adding a little bit more of a more defined the leaves just making it look more interesting making the leaves a little bit brighter too and I'm gonna do it the same to the other side as you'll see in a minute but um, feel free to just modify your painting in any way it's yours paintings make great gifts for horror fans like us or great decorations in your own house Thanks so much for painting with me. Now subscribe to our channel and hit the notification button. Keep on painting and check out etherealartsstudio.com.